So, Dr. Tom Wingfield, thank you very much for making time for us today and sharing advice and experience for the Arise Hub. So, can you tell me about your background and the involvement in COVID-19 response? Yes, so hello to everybody out there in the Arise Hub and it's really uh, fantastic to be able to speak to you about this important uh, scenario that we're going through with COVID-19. So, my name's Tom. Uh, I'm a doctor, I'm an infectious diseases doctor and I work at the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine. My interest is specifically in tuberculosis and I work at the Royal Liverpool Hospital. Um, and I've previously worked in other countries, including some in informal settlements in Peru, where I worked with uh, people with tuberculosis, and more latterly in, in Nepal and also Mozambique and Vietnam. Um, so uh, at the minute I'm actually on the COVID-19 ward that we have in the UK and I'm trying to also, uh, along with people like uh, Professor Theobald, try and help people to understand a bit more about COVID-19 and dispel some of the myths. Brilliant, thank you so much. So can you tell us what is COVID-19? So, so what is COVID-19? So, so COVID-19 is a what's called novel, which just means new coronavirus. And uh, coronaviruses, you, you might have heard of other coronaviruses such as SARS, which is the um, uh, severe acute respiratory uh, syndrome, or MERS, which is the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, which caused some, some uh, previous less widespread outbreaks. And there are about seven types of coronaviruses uh, uh, that can infect humans. But this one specifically was found in about December 2019, and it was thought to originate actually in a seafood market in, in, in Wuhan, in Hubei province, China and um, it was felt that it might have originated from uh, wild animals that were being sell sold there perhaps bats it spread through the air just like any other kind of cough or cold illness or tuberculosis for example it can be spread a little bit on surfaces but but not as much and the thing to get across to everybody is the vast majority of people have very mild symptoms mm -hmm. from this uh, so things like a flu-like illness cough some fever and sometimes shortness of breath Thank you very much. And are there people who are more vulnerable to yes, so, COVID-19? So other people who are more vulnerable, it's a good question. I'll, I'll break it down into two um, stages. Other people who are more vulnerable to get COVID-19, actually at the minute we don't quite know and I think we'll see that going forward. What we do know is who is more vulnerable from, from COVID-19 to severe disease. And those are people really who generally are older or who have existing illnesses. So things like, uh, for example, chronic lung disease, so asthma or, or COPD, chronic bronchitis, um, or ischemic heart disease, so any heart, chronic heart problems, kidney disease, diabetes, um, if people who have cancer, and also some forms of immunosuppression. So if your immune system is, is low, we know that those people have a higher likelihood of severe disease, but I would still like to stress the majority of those people still will survive to good health. For our partners out there in countries who uh, might have a high prevalence of HIV, we don't actually know yet the impact of HIV and COVID-19. It's likely that if, you're, if you have HIV, if you're on treatment and if your viral load is suppressed, you will actually have no more risks than anybody else in the population. So it would just keep encouraging people to take their HIV medicines if they're on them.